I, I define League MX as the shooter shot league. You do expect higher performances and better things from Club Americas, but it's the inconsistency. With the what is it saying consistent though? Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Real Football Show. As always, I am Lizzie Veterano, 90 Min U.S. editor and co-host of this pod. And with me, we have a very special guest, actor, writer, comedian, Marcelo Hernandez. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, well, we have a 305 Miami OG, finally another with me, because Gino is from up in New Jersey, and I've been very lonely down here in Miami-Dade. <laughs> Um, so first and foremost, I know Miami culture and everything in practice sport, but how did you get into football? Um, well, I played like my whole life. I used to play baseball, but I was so bad that my parents took me out of it because I think that, um, there wasn't enough going on. And, uh, mm -hmm. according to my mom, I used to like do cartwheels in the outfield and like, chase bugs and like because the ball never came to me mm. so um they took me out of baseball and then um i also thought the pants were itchy you know how baseball players have to wear pants yeah 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 i didn't like looking back i don't think i understood the idea of playing in the sun in pants no so and miami was, sun yeah exactly it just didn't make sense to me um And then soccer, I think, made sense because, like, I have, you know, ADD and soccer is great. For, if you have ADD, soccer is great because <laughs> it's nonstop and it's ne the ball never stops moving. So you can really, you know, um, you stay occupied. So I, st I started playing soccer, I think, when I was, like, five years mm -hmm. old, maybe six. And then uh, I never stopped. And I played my whole life. I played in high school. I played in college. Um, I played at John Carroll University, which is a tiny school in Ohio, but they're very good and they're D3 and they made it to the tournament um, a couple years in a row. So they're good. They're a good team. And for a Hispanic mom to say that you're not good at a sport to her son, like no shade, but you probably were terrible at baseball. Oh, terrible. But also Hispanic moms are honest. You know, they're, they're honest. They like to be honest. They love their son. To but, their sons. To, well, no, yeah, to their, yeah. to their daughters, to their sons. It's my son. <laughs> True, true. She didn't want to be. She didn't want to be to keep embarrassing myself, you know. Um, well, now that you played, what position were you? Uh, I was a winger my whole life, and I wish I would have had like the presence of mind to tell my because tell my coaches that I wanted to play striker more. But ah. you know, I played in Ohio, and um, you know, I think in America, your striker needs to be six feet and strong, and I um, I didn't fit that build. <laughs> um but I was I had a lot of fun as a winger and uh I definitely I still play I, I love it a lot well um on my end the reason I got into sports journalism is because I absolutely could not play I tried um I was left bench didn't work out and so I realized you know maybe on the sidelines I could be better of use and yeah it turns out yeah we're um happy to have you. we're happy to have you in the soccer world <laughs> Now, do you have any particular teams? I know you play, but do you follow any particular leagues beyond, obviously, Leagues Cup and Inter Miami? Um, well, I'm a Madrid fan. My when I was oh. little, my uh, my uncles. I have my my mom has family that's in Spain, and when I was little, they brought me a big flag of Real Madrid, and um, I was just a fan of them for a really long time. Like, obviously, the Galacticos was a crazy time, but. Um, That's the team that I came up with. And um, mm -hmm. although I love Ronaldinho and Messi, obviously, is, you know, the greatest. Uh, I was just a Madrid guy um, through and through. I love Ro when Robinho came to Madrid. I love Robinho. And um, a lot of players that came through just, um, you know, I was obsessed with Roberto Carlos forever. And, yeah, um, that makes sense. I don't know. I was always a Madrid guy. But I – and I'm so happy now that Messi is in Miami because I can finally wear his jersey. <laughs> I can finally put on a Messi jersey and not feel like a traitor, you know? So I've never put on a Messi Barcelona jersey in my life, ever. But now, wow. but now, oh, I'm getting one for sure. <laughs> I actually bought one for my cousin uh, for his wedding, but now I'm definitely going to get one for myself. That's commitment, though. That's like... 
that's commitment. But now you can get your pink hair on jersey, which um, I'm sure will look beautiful. Hurts. And you went to you went to the game, no? The Inter Miami Atlanta game. Yes, I did go to that game, and it was. Um, I mean, they gave me this hat uh, at the game, and that's why I'm I'm wearing it because at that game I had it on, and Messi scored two goals in 25 uh -huh. minutes. And then in the second half, played amazing, had an assist. Um, so, you know, I'm going to keep the hat on. I might not take it off. I may never take it off. I don't know when I'm going to take it off, but it's not soon. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and can you describe what the atmosphere was like at DRV Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale, we may add, um, not 305, but Miami nonetheless? No, it was unbelievable. Um, Messi has, uh, has created... Uh, just a totally different environment in Miami. I mean, soccer in Miami, I think, is big. I think I don't think people realize how many young people play soccer in Miami. Um, and uh, because it's just a very Latin place. Miami is like 70% Latino. So it's a lot it's of baseball. More. Exactly. It's a lot of baseball and a lot of um, soccer. Um, and, you know, Even um, Ben Kremaski, who used to play mm -hmm. at uh, Weston, which is a team that we used to play against a lot. Um, I used to play in Coral Gables for this club called the Toros. Um, yeah. But there's just a, a good soccer culture in Miami. And I remember meeting a lot of players when I was younger that were playing with the national team or that were traveling a lot and doing all these big tournaments. Weston was always really good. And I think it's – um, it's and then now that Messi's there, you know, all the Latinos that are really big soccer fans that love Messi are at the game and they're doing chants and they're making it feel like, you know, a true soccer place, you know? Um, and I think Miami's ripe for that because it's such a Hispanic place. I think it's ripe for, um, you know, this fan base that's crazy and they're chanting and they're, they bring the drums and it's, it's everything that you, that like I when I used to watch soccer, when I was really young, it was like, used to watch River and Boca, mm. which, are, which used to be those classic games back in the day. Um, there was a player on River, Marcelo Salas, who I always was like, I just love that there was a guy that had my name, so I would always, you know, I would always play with him in FIFA. Um, but um, those games are insane. The fans are insane, and um, they're screaming. And I think that Messi has brought a little bit more of that to Miami for sure. Um, so the environment was crazy. Um Yeah, the environment was amazing. Yeah, I think when he made his move and he announced that he was coming over Miami be, beyond the Beckham connection, a lot of people wondered why not Los Angeles or like the bigger franchise teams, the Galaxy LAFC, who had just dominated with um, a trophy. And what I was trying to explain to people is just the melting pot that is in Miami and how Lionel Messi can awaken that. I mean, I'm from Mexico, so my classics were like, Chivas America and to see the atmosphere of that now being translated to Major League Soccer and having the Peruvian fans, the Argentinian fans, the Mexican fans now all in some of the supporters group and create that atmosphere and seeing the rest of the league kind of realize that Miami always had the potential and the fans were always there. Um, and now to see that being awakened is just, it's just a phenomenal thing. But now we hope the results will follow. Amen. I think I, I if I keep this hat on, I think we're in good yeah. shape. Um, and I think Messi, like he's changed the team. You know, we're like we. I've been watching Inter for a while, like obviously on and off because we've had some rough seasons. Um, but I think ultimately what I've found is that as soon as he got here, even before he came into that game, his first game, We're playing so different because you have this guy watching you. Like you have Messi, Lionel Messi's watching you play. Like that's everybody's dream. Aside from playing with him, like for him to sit there and watch you and be interested is like, like I can't imagine what that does to a player. So I think that just his presence alone, like I think Messi could sit on the bench and we would play better like than we have all season. Um, and then obviously when he gets on the field, it's, it's something else. He's uh. He's just, it's funny. You watch him and you think that he's going slow. You watch him and you're like, wow, why is he walking? Yeah. Why is he, why does he look like he's not doing anything? And then he was just, you know, slowly getting, it's almost like he distracts players into thinking he's not doing anything. Messi's like, But no, he's no, planning no. it out. 
I'm not doing anything. Don't even worry about me. No. And they're like, <laughs> oh, okay. And then next thing you know, he's in oh. your box. And you're like, you're done. He's so clinical. He's so calm on the ball. I don't, I'm so happy. I'm in such a good mood. Ever since, <laughs> now, now that I have Messi, like, in my town, like. Superior. Oh, my God. It's incredible. I feel superior. Like, yeah, 100%. And we all. You live where Messi lives? No, I don't think so. I mean. No. We we always knew Miami was was better than everywhere else, but this I guess just gave us that um, real validation and satisfaction. A hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And now, now Jordi Alba and Sergio Busquets, I get to wear all these jerseys now. These jerseys, <laughs> people, I was never ever in my life gonna put on these people's jerseys ever never. in my life. And now, if I want to, I can. And prettier, I may add. Um, not a huge fan of the Barca jerseys as as a whole and the Spotify, but, but, but the pink, we love the pink, the Miami sunset pink, iconic, iconic. Um, now we want to hear predictions from you, Paquito, and for previous viewers and new viewers, we have Paquito Bird, a Mexican tradition, picking out predictions. Um, he will pick um, a little paper out of a box that will decide the winner and we shall see who it is. So, um, Baguito will predict the game, the upcoming Inter Miami game um, against Charlotte this Friday. So we shall see what the Pajarito picks. Yeah, I am excited. I honestly, though, I will say, if it's, if it's not to my liking, I'm going to get angry. Valid, as you should. But I think it is. Oh, oh, that's a, that's a pink paper. It's a pink paper. <laughs> Is it pink paper or white paper? Yeah, it's the pink paper. So easy. So that's it. That's it. We're going to win. Okay, great. Fantastic. You're going to win. Yeah, the bird The bird is right. I always said the bird was right. I love the bird. I've always loved the bird. It's because I, of the hat. I've always said that Paquito is smart and correct and, um, you know, very trustworthy animal. Um, of course. Yeah, so amazing. 100%? Paquito. Huh? 100%? 100% Paquito. Te agradezco por todo tu trabajo. Estoy muy agradecido por ti. Um, no, I think, um, yeah, we need to beat Charlotte. And then um, I hope that we get to play at home. So I hope that it goes, um, I hope that we end up playing against um, Querétaro because I know that the MLS teams are hosting. Yeah, that, sh that should be interesting. Um, Querétaro, for those who don't know, should have technically been relegated out of Liga MX, um, was not because of the pause of relegation um, due to COVID. And so the fact that they're now in the quarterfinal stage of this tournament is shocking to everybody in Mexico. It's kind of become a yeah. meme. So if Querétaro end up eliminating Messi, like we'll break the internet in Mexico. Um, yeah. Well, I don't want them to eliminate Messi, but I want them to play against Messi in the semis so that we can- Would be interesting. We can be in Miami. Definitely. Um, <laughs> just don't take off the hat. Um, no, no. But what is your score prediction for this Friday? I um, I need to do more research on Charlotte. Mm. Um, but I think that we have had no problem scoring goals. So I think that we will, like, it won't be like a, um, I don't think it'll be like a 1-0 game. I think it's going to be, um, you know, probably... I'm going to say that we win three to one or three to two because we, okay. do, we do let in goals. That is a problem yeah. that we're having. So I think it's going to be something along those lines, three to one, three to two, hopefully three, one. Um, if we can, you know, and I would love a clean sheet, but my final answer is going to be three to one. Hmm. I'm going to go four one. I agree with you on the clean sheet, but I do think, once Messi gets the momentum and the confidence, I just, I just don't think like emotionally teams have what it takes to stop him. I think they also want to see him win. Um, yeah. As do all of us. <laughs> they get mad at him. I love seeing Messi get mad. Nothing brings me more joy. I love the anger that that man has. The anger inside of that short king is incredible. We love a short king. And I think he's just uh, a king. No, it's funny. I want to take that back. I want to take that back. He's not a short king. He's simply a king. Oh, uh, okay. His height has nothing to do with his king status. He's simply a king. 
And I I want to see him get angry. I love seeing him get angry. I love him. He gets nippy. It's great. It's great. Um, well, before we go, we have Paquito decided to do a couple fortunes for you. Um, okay. Yeah, just life, football, all the all the great little fortunes that Paquito chose for you. So we have two special messages for you. Okay, Paquito. Don't let me down. The path to the goal may be winding, but the persistence, you'll navigate it with grace. Wow. So lovely. So Akito. kind. Akito's really trying to get on my good side today. <laughs> it really like... is. Let's see what the second one has. And you can choose one. Wow. You guys really gave Akito a human home. <laughs> yeah, a good living room. If you want to grow as a team player, you'll have to be willing to learn. Wow. Interesting. I think the first one was better for you. Thank you, Paquito. I appreciate that. Um, and before we go as well, I want to know what you think the absolute final will be. Or what you want it to be. I, um, so I guess it's, it would be, I think, if possible, it could because it is the winner of New York and Philadelphia on the other side. Mm -hmm. So it's the winner of New York, Philadelphia, and the winner of Querétaro and somebody else. It could be so from one side you have LAFC, you have um, Philadelphia, and then you have um, Club America, and then you have Querétaro and Inter Miami who are. Just, I think that um, for. Inter to really send a message. I want them to play. I want it to go Inter Miami versus a LAFC in the final. Ooh. And I want um I want Messi to beat LAFC and turn the whole league upside down. First trophy. In first, such a fashion, too. First trophy beating LAFC, the you know, reigning team or a team that has, you know, one. Yeah, yeah um, the reigning MLS champions. Yeah, I think that, that that would bring me the most joy and it would send the biggest message, I think. Because, you know, as an Inter Miami, as a new found Inter Miami Lionel Messi bandwagon fan, um, I know that before this, it wasn't pretty. So it was I, terrible. I want to make it, I, I want to make, you know, I want to make a statement and I think beating LAFC will make a statement. And I have to shout out also Benja Kremashi who's um, just such a beast, He's such a young player. And I'm like living vicariously through him. The fact that he's like a young Argentinian kid who grew up in Miami and he was going to go to college, but he went to the academy and like ended up playing with Messi and he's wearing number 30. Yeah. And Messi like, gives him hugs. Oh, dude. <laughs> How much do you wish that with you? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you yeah. did the right thing, Marcelo. You became a comedian, but wow. Sometimes lately, lately, I've been wishing I was Ben Hakanamasi. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's like a Cinderella story. I don't think in his wildest dreams he ever imagined he'd be in this it's, position. It's so beautiful. It's so poetic. And everything I've seen of him is just such a good and humble kid. And um, he's so grateful to be there. It's it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you, AT&T, for um, this segment. And Paquito, we love Paquito. We love Miami. Um, and thanks for watching. Of course. Thank you, guys. Thank you, AT&T. And thank you, Paquito, for the wise words. I'm going to practice. <laughs>